Thank you all for having me here. Um, yes, hopefully up there, there are some images of, of wine that I would share with you. Wine, wine is love, and wine is mystery, and wine is au cuisine, and it's just bread and cheese on the table. Uh, wine is used to launch great ships, and it's a celebration of anniversaries and weddings. And for me, every day, and, and I'm serious, every day it's a celebration at the end of the day when I pull the cork on that bottle and I have a glass of wine. Um, wine soothes very tender spirits and uh, it's known to make great lovers of sly poets and shy boys and girls. I don't know, I don't know when wine really got started but probably somebody climbed up to the top of a tree and they found that there was a cluster of grapes up there and something began and then technology and science stepped in because some clever farmer said, oh, well, if we grew it this high, we could do it a lot more easily. So fast forward several centuries and uh, I entered the picture. I was seven years old when I began drinking wine at dinner every night. Uh, I was 19 when I um, became the winemaker and the vineyard manager for my uh, family's Ben Marl Vineyards in the Hudson Valley of New York. By then, my teen years had been spent in the vineyards of Burgundy and Cognac and Champagne and up, up the Rhine a couple of times. And uh, when we moved back from, from that sojourn in Europe, where my father, who was an artist and in love with wine, we began to convert our beautiful hillside into a vineyard. We took my father's studio and we made it into a, a winery. We dug more tunnels. Um, we, across from the studio, we built a tool shed big enough to hold our equipment. And then we created a courtyard because on the other side of it, we built a, the family house and it looked over the vineyards that we had cut into the side of the hill and across the Hudson River. We could see as far as the Berkshire Mountains. It was a winery in very much the traditional European method where one family has the vineyard and they grow the grapes and they make the wine, and they bottle their own very personal wine. And, uh, and that's very typical. In most winemaking areas, this model uh, exists today, and I hope it will continue forever and ever. But science and technology has added a new face to winemaking. For example, our son, one of our four sons, graduated from UC Davis with a degree in enology winemaking. And that's one university of dozens around the world that have degrees in winemaking. He graduated with a very high understanding of math, far beyond mine, which is pretty low, so that's not impressive. But he also was short of just a couple of credits for engineering degrees. It could have been in materials, it could have been in chemistry, it could have been in uh, computer technology. He's, winemaking is an advanced science. It's moved from one person's personal art to include something called virtual winemaking because it does take advantage of, of many of the things that we've learned about. It's a logical progression that when you go to a wine shop and you look at the labels and all the brands that are out there, you can't really tell very easily whether that is one person's interpretation of the terroir, the soil, and God-given things, or whether it's from a virtual winery. You'd be surprised to, to know. Um, well, maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but take, take the, the plethora of Australian wineries that have come up and they've got their cute critters and their happy hoppers out there, there's a very good chance that that wine was made in five or ten wineries. It was 
pulled together again, blended and bottled, and you can probably buy it for under $10 somewhere, and it's, it's a good wine. There is, it was a marketing concept. That's how it began. There was no winemaker out there at the beginning. There was no vineyard. There's no winery. There's no bricks and mortar. It was a marketing concept. And some very good things have come from it. And I'm not denigrating it by, uh, by describing it this way because about five years ago, I anteed up and I bought this screaming California Cabernet for almost $1,000 a bottle. Robert Parker had put its blessing on it. Very high numbers, drop dead, delicious wine. No winemaker, no vineyards, no uh, wine cellars, no bricks and mortar. It was a series of services that somebody ordered up on their telephone. And, and it works. Um, but where did, where did this come from? Where did this start? I, don't, I honestly don't know, but I know that recently I read about a California vineyard in the Napa Valley, and it sold, it was a large vineyard, it sold for $280,000 an acre. So for the high quality winemaker who likes to crop at just two tons an acre, that's $140,000 a ton. And if you figure how many bottles come out of a ton, that's $90 a ton before you've grown the grapes, before you got the winemaker in there, before you built the winery with all the equipment and the bottling line and the refrigeration and the, and the warehouse. You could easily be looking, if you're at a little operation, you could be looking at several hundred thousand dollars and it's in, it, at least it's in the millions for most wineries getting started these days. That precludes somebody somebody like me, and maybe a few of you here, from ever having your own brand or the possibility of creating a label. I know for me, uh, I had bought my father's winery in the Hudson Valley when he got dementia. In 2006, I had to sell it. It was, it was killing me. And then in 2011, my wife and I sold the Chad's Ford Winery and suddenly, I had no vineyard and I had no winery. My wife had no annual yeast infections, but I had time on my hands. And, and, and this, that really happened. My wife, I think, was a little worried about what I was going to do and what kind of trouble I could get into. So she said, why don't you become a virtual winemaker? And I thought about it. It sounded like fun. I got on the phone. I called. And I did what everybody else does, which is I called one of dozens of California contract winemaking facilities. That's all they do. And I told him the price points that I wanted my wine to sell for, and I told him the grape variety. They hooked me up with uh, a very good vineyard up on the top of Howell Mountain, which is a very prestigious appellation in the Napa Valley. And then they asked me questions about the style of wine that I wanted to make. So I told them that. I told them that we also wanted to have a consulting winemaker and they needed to have access to the wines and um, some control in the winery, which by the way is our son, our, one of our sons who is a winemaker in California. And so he then, oh, we made a deal. We, I agreed to pay. And he then said, but we need to have this type of wood. The barrels were ordered from France. They were delivered to the contract facility. The barrels were filled. And now we're talking about bottling. So I've got to get back on the phone again. I'm looking for a mobile bottling line that will bottle these wines according to my son's specifications. That bottling line is in the back of a truck. It's going to roll up to the winery, and it's going to put the wine in the bottle exactly as my son would like. I think he doesn't want to filter it. And um, it will go to a warehouse nearby that has been licensed. It has the permit so that it can ship directly 
to my customers. So I think of virtual winemaking as pretty neat and clean. Uh, you don't get your hands dirty. You can take your trips to Napa Valley and write them off as a business expense. That's always been very important to me. Um, it's fun. Uh, you have no investment other than the commitments that you've made over the telephone. And for our family, I think it's very important because we haven't required them to have a human resources department to manage the winery and the vineyards. So my future, hopefully, will be that I will let my friends know that the wine is bottled and ready. They will all buy a case, and I can repeat this again until I get tired of going to California. Or my son decides to pick up the label himself and, and do what he wants to do. I really appreciate your interest in it. I'm just crazy about wine. Um, and I think it's really neat that this, this is something that can be done. And um, I'd love to taste your examples of it. Thank you. <laughs>